think the resolution is not great, but anyway. Uh, is it possible to dim the lights of just a little bit so that it's clear? Just dim a little bit. Dim a little bit. That's great. One. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, first of all, um, I'd like to thank the organizers very much for this uh, opportunity here. It's my first time in Russia, first time in East West. I'm literally loving it every every bit. I was very impressed by the party yesterday. It made me remember a lot of, of Brazil. And as a matter of fact, I choose to bring a uh, few slides, uh, just one slide on on what we have in my home city. We also do have a, a, a podium, it's a, it's a major thing in the region that they come from. And if you, if you see the kind of clothes that we use, it's very similar to, to what we saw yesterday. So I think we are not that different at all, I mean, in this perspective. But one thing that I should point out is that we also have this. <laughs> And this is, this is the only piece that is, is, is missing here in, in East West. But, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll be talking about uh, the research I started doing uh, in 2007 when I started my PhD in Oxford, which concerns uh, sperm locomotion, more precisely human sperm locomotion. So. As most of you know here, sperm cells are produced on the testicle. The gland in this testicle is, is outside of the body to be three degrees cooler than the rest of the body. You can produce about 1,000 sperm cells per heartbeat, which is a, of, an awful lot of, of cells. 20% of, uh, of this sperm uh, population has a normal size and shape and can take up to two months to produce a single cell. So what you see here are human sperm cells under the microscope. And you see all kind of motion. You see cells that they interact with, with themselves. You, you see cells with two heads, uh, no head, two tails, or just motionless. So uh, the, kind of, the, kind of, the kind of things you see in biology is very, very much complicated. But um, what we know, from, from the biology. There are three living organisms, about from 50 to 60 micrometers long. Uh, a, fertile, a fertile life can span up to 48 hours under the right circumstances. And uh, an average ejaculate can contain perhaps even over 208 million of cells. And, sorry about that. And these cells are incredibly sensitive. So, for instance, uh, I don't know, I don't know, sorry about that. cells that carry the, the boys' chromosomes is faster, while the girls' chromosomes is a little, a little bit longer, although it's not yet proved. The, the internal uh, physiology of the cell is incredibly complicated, and that's uh, the, the thing that I wanted to talk about. So you have uh, 
here they have densely packed uh, DNA crystals, basically. So this is the the, the payload that this, this cell has to carry. The flagellum is is far from a simple uh, elastic uh, structure. You have the inside, in the inner core, the axonem that spans throughout the cell. And for mammalian cells, you also have this additional structure here. They're they're called all dense fibers. And in this bit here, you also have the mitochondria, which are uh, uh, responsible for the ATP generation. And all this structure, they taper down along the flagella until here, where you only find the axonem. The axonem is the most important part on the locomotion of the cell. You have a very engineering-like structure, basically nine microtubules that are surround a microtubule doublet. They are connected by elastic links, radial spokes, and all sort of uh, uh, elastic proteins that are very, very complicated. But the most important thing, one of the most important things here, is that this structure is far from a passive structure. It's, a, it's an active structure. And why is active? Because you have molecular motors that are deeply embedded in this structure. And they uh, respond uh, to ATP with mechanical work. Basically, if you give energy, the molecular motors will walk. As, uh, not, not as Professor A.D., but uh, uh, walking machines. This is an example of a myosin walking in a microtuber, for instance. This kind of molecular motors you find everywhere in biology. Uh, this is another ex example in, in, in the cell division. So here you have microtubules, and you have these molecular motors that basically walk past uh, microtubules, and they force one microtube against each other. And this, and this makes uh, you know, a, a shear force that is responsible to actually the, the cell division. It's not different for sperm cells. The major difference here is, however, that you have the, the filaments are not free to slide. They are, they are actually connected. As I mentioned before, they are connected by radial spokes, elastic links. So every time the, these uh, uh, molecular motors, they try to slide past one filament against the other, uh, these, these passive structures, they, they constrain the motion. And then your, your motion that is tangential is reverted to something that causes bending. So it's a very interesting way on how to produce uh, bending waves in the flagella, given that the, uh, that the initiation of this bending wave is actually in the tangential direction. So that's, that's was one way that uh, nature came to overcome all sort of problems. So what are we talking here today is a little bit about uh, experiments that I did, everything in England so far, in mathematical modeling and how we connect the stupids. So in terms of uh, the mathematical modeling, I'll, talk, I, I'll give just a, glint, uh, a glance on, on the kind of, uh, on our kind of, of, of system because it's very important for us to have a kind of sense of what is happening in, 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 this, in this system. Because the sperm cell is very small, the Reynolds number, which measures the relative uh, importance between viscous, oh sorry, inertial effects and viscous forces in this case. And because L is the characteristic length, the Reynolds number appears to be very, very small for a sperm cell. This means that from, from the perspective of the cell, inertia is completely unimportant and everything is dominated by viscosity. This means uh, the pressure satisfies Laplace's equation, and the velocity is necessarily biharmonic. Uh, the consequences, uh, the mathematical consequences of that, is that everything is linear and instantaneous, as, uh, as Scott mentioned uh, yesterday. This means that uh, if you double the pressure and the force, you possibly you will also double the velocity, and vice versa. A clear distinction with our, uh, 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 how can I say, with our idea of uh, Newtonian mechanics, because now force is not proportional to acceleration anymore, but uh, velocity. What, what, what are the consequences of that in our system? 
here you have the Stokes equation. If you, if you um, uh, substitute by minus u and minus p, this also satisfies the same equation. What this means? This, this basically means that if you if you change and or revert revert your motion, you will retrace every material point in history, and that's it, that's it is what we call reversibility. Something that also Scott mentioned yesterday. There is a very nice movie that exi exemplifies that, uh, made by G. I. Taylor. Uh, and this is a, uh, I will stop you for a second. So this is. Uh, a cylinder that contains a very viscous uh, uh, fluid, and, and then you have the handle here and a, a small, a small dyed, dyed area here. So he turned this handle exactly five or six times. I don't remember. And then you see, as you would expect, the dyed area will, you know, will become fuzzy because because of the motion of the outer fluid. But once he reversed the motion, what what happens is that. The, basically, the dyed area reappears. This is only possible because you don't have inertia anymore. Everything here is basically dominated by viscous forces. So, so, so then you ask, okay, that's fine, but what, what are the consequences for, for microorganisms? Well, in terms of swimming, this has a very deep consequence. This is, these are also movies made by uh, the famous G.A. Taylor, and here you have a kind of uh, micro, uh, not micro, a swimmer that performs the, this kind of motion. And here you just have water, and here, and here you have glycerol. You can see that this the same the same uh, swimmer will not be able to actually uh, locomote in this kind of regime, just because every time you 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 make this motion, you go forward, but then you retrace you retrace the velocity, you go back in history and then you come back. So it's not possible ever to swim in low Reynolds, uh, low Reynolds number regime if you're performing a reversible motion. That is uh, what like you call the scalar theory, which is not... Uh, incidentally, there are other ways how you break the symmetry in this system. Helical waves is a good way to, to break the symmetry, in, and this is uh, one of the ways that bacteria uh, found to, to locomote in this kind of, of fluid. So you can ask about sperm. Traveling waves are not time reversible and therefore is one of the most common uh, uh, kind of uh, locomotion you find in this micro scale, for example. Uh, in 2D it's hard to distinguish a, a rotating helix from an oscillating from a traveling wave. So is that if you look at a helix rotated yes, yes, inside, yes. it looks like a traveling wave. Mm -hmm. And so is the sperm more like a helix or more like the traveling wave? That's a very good analogy. I think, I think in that perspective, I, I think you could use that perspective. Uh, but the reason why you have locomotion here is because if you really try to uh, revert this movie, you see the motion is not exactly the same. Uh, so in, in mathematical terms, it's not as, uh, symmetrical in time. It's not reversible in time. But uh, in terms of physics, what you have is a propulsive force that goes in this direction because the normal drag is twice larger than the tangential drag. So, so I'll be talking about uh, I'll be talking about a little bit of, of mathematical modeling I did in this field, and one of the first problems that I came across was with uh, a certain sperm. So when I when I started my PhD, one of the first movies I took was this one. And it was very puzzling for me because I could watch for hours and this sperm cell would stay there for hours. I could go, have lunch, and return, and this cell would still be there, circling and circling. Basically, the sperm is, is sending asymmetric uh, traveling waves on, 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 on the flagella. And, then you, and this, of course, happened to induce a circular motion, uh, overall, overall uh, circular motion. So if you, if, if you want to see this in biology, you see many different systems. For instance, uh, uh, marine invertebrates, when, when under the influence of a chemotractant, they, uh, 
they will develop these asymmetric shapes so that they can find the maximum on, on a nutrient concentration. If you induce some chemical like calcium, calcium is very important in, in biology. Basically, if you if you induce if you put these cells in a calcium concentration, the molecular motors inside they will start to develop very strong uh, forces, and therefore will 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 make uh, asymmetric bending waves, as you can see here. But not only that, also hydrodynamic effects can can be responsible for circular motion. So if you have a sperm cell, because the sperm cell uh, is, is not exactly planar, the, the, the traveling wave is, 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 is slightly helical. And therefore, a few cells, they tend to rotate among its own axis. And because of this rotation, if you put one cell very close to a solid boundary, what will happen is that because of the hydrodynamic forces now are, unba are balanced but are not symmetric, so the up and the out torque is different. This, this uh, rotation among these axes will, will generate a torque in this direction so that you always conserve uh, the chirality within a species. <laughs> so sometimes you find cells that are trapped in circular motion just because they are too close to a boundary and they cannot escape. So that's a pure hydrodynamic effect. That, that, something like that had to be true for your video. Otherwise, the plane would have been precessing when you're always starting. Yeah, but I will show, I will show you one movie that uh, contradicts this. So, so then I took another movie. In this movie, I, can see, I could see cells that go clockwise, cells that go counterclockwise, and if this cell goes uh, counterclockwise, it means that it's away from the boundary. Because if it's boundary effect, all the cells, they have to rotate in the same direction. And also, not only this, you also have a straight line uh, uh, trajectories. So, so my, my main question when I, when I got this movie is, what's breaking the symmetry of this system, given that it's, intri given that it's intrinsically symmetric? So in order to do this, I came with a mathematical model, I'll jump that with a very simple mathematical model. You basically see the cell as a, as a, a flexible filament. They are connected together. You have the timings working here. So these, these, uh, these point forces, they actually uh, mimic uh, the, the molecular motors distribution along this, this flagello. You have some elasticity. You have some tension that will act as your Lagrange multiplier, as everyone likes here. And this will uh, constrain that my flagella will not grow or shrink under deformation. And also an, an active force. But for that active force, I don't know because uh, the biology uh, books, they don't tell us what, how the cells are performing this contraction. And because I want uh, to seek for solutions that are asymmetric, what I did was I considered a very simple traveling wave, just a cosine wave, symmetric, to see what happened. Newtonian mechanics tells, tells us that uh, the internal forces must balance the hydrodynamic forces. The hydrodynamic uh, uh, equations are very hard to solve for this problem. There is a very nice uh, up to, uh, leading order uh, accurate uh, theory, which we call risk force theory, which relates more or less the drag, the, the drag of a small piece of cylinder will be twice larger in the normal direction than the tangential direction. And we call this the anisotropy, anisotropy uh, operator. And of course, the force is proportional to, to the velocity. And then you have the complete, the complete balance of forces and torques in the system. You, you plug everything together, and then you get this elastohydrodynamic equation. It's a fourth order uh, uh, differential equation in the arc length very stiff to solve. The, the important non-dimensional parameter here is the sperm compliance number, I will, I will call sperm number for short. It basically relates the viscous effects uh, relative to the bedding effects. But in my system, because the, 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 because the cells have are, are grouply the same elastic bedding across the population, uh, every time that I change this number, uh, what effectively I'm doing is I'm, I'm changing the viscosity. So when the sperm number is large, I have a very viscous medium. When I, the sperm number is, is, is low, I have a very uh, watery medium. 
and all and these equations are complemented by the inlet sensibility constraint, as I mentioned, is a second order uh, boundary va value equation for the tension. So you, you need to, to include tension in your system to, to satisfy the, the inlet sensibility. Okay, so this is the result of numerical simulation. So, so this is my virtual sperm. You, you can see the good news is that it swims. Uh, in, in, a, in a rather complicated fashion, but uh, one thing that I want to point out here is that the basic ingredients only. I just included, included a little bit of elasticity, a little bit of internal mechanics, and the hydrodynamic track. And the active force is uh, sinusoidal. Yes, and the active force is just a cosine wave that travels from here to there. But the, the result of the shape is not sinusoidal. No. The, resu uh, the resultant shape is, is something uh, that really depends on the internal uh, force. So, if I if I continue, so so one thing one thing that I didn't mention, sorry, is that the movie I took that it had all kinds of locomotions, I actually took in a high viscous medium, high viscous medium. The movie I showed with different tracks, it, it was a very high uh, viscous environment, and then I tried a high sperm number here to see what happens, and that was exactly what I saw. So once you start increasing the sperm number, you start to see this very asymmetric beating shape. This is for different boundary conditions. So it's like less shape for, for the clumped hat. So basically, if the, hat, if the cell is attached to a substrate somehow, or, or is free to, to hinge at a given point. And this is a remarkable a new instability, because we know this instability from, from bulk instability. So if you have if you have a, a filament, and if you have tangential forces, what will happen is that this filament will eventually buckle under this pressure. What you see here is exactly the same kind of uh, elastic stability. The main difference, so here I plot the tension in time and space. You see that the tension increases until a critical level where the flagellum cannot uphold, and then buckles to release this tension. But the problem is you have still the same forcing mechanism, which maintain the curved shape, and therefore you, you have this asymmetric uh, uh, kind of solution. The next question on this system would be, is it possible to get this, this kind of uh, asymmetries on, uh, on a free swimming cell? And the, and the answer is yes. And they are very, very uh, sensitive to, to details of the head. So basically, I'm not reviewing the movie I showed uh, I can answer the question what is happening there, but I'm, I'm saying that these cells might be uh, susceptible to uh, elastic uh, instabilities and they might not be able to actually uh, uh, penetrate a more viscous medium just because of, of the, 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 uh, the amount of friction they, they have to, to swim through this kind of medium. Which, which leads me to another question. On, on this system. What, what are the mechanical properties of the flagellum? So, a very interesting uh, experiment was made by Woolley in, in 2001. This is sea urchin sperm flagella. Sea urchin sperm flagella is a rather uh, simple sperm because you don't have the additional structures I showed you before. It, it only contains the, the axonym. The major difference is that the sea urchin sperm is a marine, uh, the sea urchin is a marine species. So therefore, these kind of cells, they are used to only swim in, in watery medium. So they, they're never exposed to, to high viscosity. Once you put these cells in a high viscosity medium, this is what you get. You have all these kind of uh, wave compression, which look like a, a neural elastic, really neat. Or this very asymmetric uh, shape, where the cell is actually performing a circular motion. This is what I got from the simulation. So qualitatively speaking, we can, we can uh, get the same kind of idea. And the reason why this is happening is not because the cell wants want it, but basically the cell has no other way to do because they have, uh, is, is susceptible for this, kind, for this high viscosity. So the, 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 the high tension that the, the, the flagellum is experiencing is, uh, is leading to this uh, elastic instability. 
So the next question would be, okay, but what, what about if I include the, the, the accessory structures, the, the structures that supposedly would uh, stop, stabilize the, the flagellum? This is, uh, these are experiments made for human sperm cells, and what you can see for the same kind of fluid, and what you can see is that you don't have this kind of elastic instability. And this is exactly what I got in simulations. So once I include this stabilizing effect, so basically here is stiffer than here, you stabilize the solution, and this cell now is able to swim in the kind of medium that this cell wouldn't. So basically we're, we're, we're telling for the first time that the cells evolved in such a way, at least in mammalian cells, so that they, they are able to penetrate more viscous medium. And incidentally, what you find is that these additional structures, they actually reinforce the flagella in places where you expect high tension. So mechanically speaking, it makes sense. Evolutionary speaking is a big leap, but yet we, we are allowed to hypothesize, right? Another fascinating uh, effect of this system is, is, is what is called contraband phenomenon. This was discovered in 2005. So if you take a rat sperm and you kill the, the, the cell, you get a, a straight and passive elastic filament. And then if you try to bend it, what you get is, is that this passive region you start to develop curvature in the opposite direction that they posit curvature. And that, at that time, was called paradoxical because, as you all might know here, Euler Bernoulli theory, if you, if you just try to bend a single filament, the, the part that is passive, you have no forces, no torques, so it, we, it will remain straight. So, in that system, it was hypothesized that this is happening because you have the additional structures and something complicated is happening over there. But then, the same group tried to, to do a sea urchin sperm, which only has the axon M. And they found exactly the same, the same kind of, of phenomenon. So this, is, this established the contraband phenomenon as something uh, intrinsically related to how the axon M is built. And until now, there are no theory that could uh, predict this kind of uh, 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 curvature. So this is just here to show if you use what people usually do, they try to solve their other last problem. Famous, everyone, everyone did this once in their life. They have this equation. If you put a point force in a, in a different uh, arc length position, you don't get any uh, uh, Deformation on, on this on this passive uh, region. <laughs> You're going to show us the theory. Yes. Yes. Okay. The grand finale. So if you, but but the important thing to 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 take into account here is that is actually the the internal link. So these filaments are not free to slide. They actually resist the sliding because they have internal uh, proteins, elastic proteins. So when you take into account these kind of things, I will just rush. I, I don't think I have much time, but I'll just uh, rush to this. Basically, you connect these filaments with elastic links. And you solve this, this static solution. So basically, uh, uh, you, you have point forces here, symmetric point forces. Uh, in a distribution of elastic links, you resolve this problem, you get a, a, a modified euler elastic equation with, uh, with, a very, with a very interesting uh, matching condition because you have to remember that the point forces are, are in the middle of this structure and therefore you have to assure that the torque, the bending moment across this region is continuous. The important, uh, the important um, dimensional parameter here is what we call sliding resistance parameter. It just tells us how stiff are these elastic links. I also included in this model the basal compliance. So basically, because I, did, I didn't tell, but this, the flagellum is not, is not rigidly attached to the head. It has some compliance in the head that the, these filaments may, might slide or not. 
and, and gamma accounts for this kind of uh, uh, extra resistance. And what you get is this kind of solution. So the counter the counterband effect is recovered. And and you see here, D I I am increasing the distance, and the powers here means the, the relative uh, displacement between the two filaments. And you see that uh, you know this kind of uh, this kind of solutions can can be uh, modeled uh, well up to the uh, up to now rather not not precisely, but it, it gives a good uh, a good first hint for us. One thing that we could try also was to compare the the, the force that you need to buckle this this structure. So this is the Euler Bernoulli. Uh, Solution and this is the distance. So basically, you are forcing the filament until a given distance, and this is these are the forces, the relative forces for an Euler Bernoulli filament, and these are the solutions if you take into account some kind of a, 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 this this elastic link. And what you see is that depending on the gamma, is that these squares here, at least up to up to here, they are very similar in terms of. Uh, 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 how can I say? They're, yeah, they, they are very similar. Which, which kind of uh, masked and hide this kind of effect in early times? So people actually did these experiments in the 1980s, and they used the Euler Bernoulli theory to fit the solution and try to get the elastic bending moment, the elastic uh, stiffness. But ob obviously, this number doesn't mean anything to us now because it's just an effective number. It doesn't tell us how stiff is the structure and how this is compared with the elastic links. So this is this work, we try to do something on that respect. And the beautiful thing about this is that actually you can, you can uh, solve the, this region and give an analytical solution for just this region. And then you fit with your data. And what you get is exactly Mu and gamma. And this is just the experiment, and the red line is our model fitting, which agrees pretty well with what we see in, 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 the, in, in the real world. It also means that now we can actually tell what is really the elastic bending, not something effective that, that was, was given a few, a few decades ago. I will change gears now to something more experimental and some work I did. Uh, so because, because we know everything about fluid mechanics, you can try to work the inverse problem. So basically, on the, on the other problem, I, I didn't know what, what were the, the, the force distribution, and I posed the force distribution, and I found the solution, the shape, in space and time. Now, because I have the movies, I can track the flagella, I have the, posi the position, and now I want to guess what are the force distribution inside the flagella. So that's also the first time uh, in this system, because you can guess position, if you know the position, calculate velocities, we know that Stokes mechanics gives velocities proportional to forces and torques, and therefore we can guess uh, uh, ATP consumption, all, all these kind of things. So these are two experiments that I did uh, during, during this, this time. This is for low viscosity medium, and this is for high viscosity medium. So you see that how the cells, they develop completely different uh, heating patterns. Here you have a more 3D fashion, torsion, and all, all, all kind of things, including very high frequency. While here, what you get is a meander information, as, as you, you, you might be uh, familiar by now. You can calculate things like curvature, so this is time, this is space, and the, and the interesting thing of, uh, about that is that if you look at these shapes, you see something very complicated going on. It's very difficult to see what, what is really going on from this. But once you plot the curvature, you see that you actually, the cell is developing uh, linear waves of propagation. Primary, secondary, primary, secondary. So the cell is not trying to do anything fancy. Is is still a linear propagation? Is a, a linear traveling wave? And when you increase the viscosity, it's even simpler. And that was re remarkable. That something so complicated, the curvature is actually very very simple, it, roughly linear, and, and very very periodic, as you can see. We can go on and calculate things as uh, elastic uh, um, mechanic energy. 
And why this is important? So this is the mechanical, uh, the energy distribution along the flagellum. And what you, you can see is that the, mechan the uh, mechanical work is higher towards the end, well, the, mid, the, the middle point of the, uh, of the flagellum. Can you, can you? This, is, this is important. Can you those plots so this is in time. Actually, you only, you only have to see this, this last bit here. So this gives you uh, how much mechanical work the cell over a bit cycle uh, that the cell is is performing. So in energy, yeah, energy for uh, for each element, so joules per meter. So this is uh, energy uh, density, energy distribution. And what you can see is actually the, that the, uh, the the mechanical dissipation actually uh, happens towards the middle of the flagellum. And this is a, a very important uh, clue for us because we know that the mitochondria lies on the neck. So you have the head, you have the mitochondria here. Biologists always told us that the mitochondria is there because it's where you, you need more, more ATP. And that's not correct. So we are trying to understand how we can uh, transfer the mechanical expenditure to the actual chemical expenditure. It's a big, it's a big uh, jump to that. But yeah, this is giving us preliminary information on that. We can, we can move on and calculate the loss field around the cell. Remember, I just made an image of the cell, and because I know the position and the properties of the fluid, I know fluid mechanics, and then I can solve the, the loss field magnitude around the cell and see how the flow influences, let's say, diffusion, nutrients, and all these, these kind of things. But the most important thing for us at the moment is to guess the internal mechanics. So remember, the, we are in a, in a Newtonian uh, system. The top, you, we need, we need the, to, the total balance of forces. The internal forces are balanced by the viscous forces. The viscous forces we know because we track the flagella. And, and the internal forces, they are uh, divided between the passive elastic and the active. We, if we know the elastic properties, then we can make a measurement from this movie without ever touching the cell, what of what the, the diamonds, the molecular motors are doing. And this is the first of the first hand what we got so far. This is just a balance between the hydrodynamic couple and the elastic uh, bending moment. And what you get is this uh, uh, active bending moment distribution. So this is actual experiments. This is not uh, this is not um, numerical simulations or anything like that. Okay. I just want to thank uh, my group. My supervisor at that time was, uh, was Iman Gaffney. I also worked closely with Alan Ali And the people in Birmingham involved, uh, John Blake, Dave Smith, which are mathematicians. And, and Jackson is the biologist. It's, it, because we, 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 we do the experiments in the women's hospital in Birmingham using real uh, human sperm cells. This is some uh, uh, references that we found. And uh, this is just a joke because this is uh, River Thames in London. And uh, after you start uh, you know, seeing and looking too much on sperm, you see sperm everywhere. <laughs> and this is uh, in Russian, when you guys. It's right? <laughs> possible. <laughs> no, why small letter? <laughs> Any questions? Uh, just on your very last slide, you showed the torque as a function of position. Yes. At any moment, uh, did you look at the, the uh, power as a function of position? Yes, we did. We this is still ongoing work. But for example, is there substantial negative power, or is it almost all positive power? Um, it depends on the region. We still don't understand the data, so that's why um, I didn't include here. But uh, yeah, um, so far mostly positive. I mean, just for context, I saw a talk last week where they were doing similar things with a bigger animal. And they, their claim, I don't know if it's true or not, is that there was substantial negative work at the end of the tail, and that the animal was willing to pay the price for that negative work to increase the hydrodynamic efficiency. This is, this is funny because we also got these kind of things. But we, we don't want to, to go in this direction yet. We want to understand first. But yeah, thank you for your comment. Thank you.